This demonstration is attaching a VMware ESXi server to an ME4 iSCSI array. Before we begin, it is important to understand the layout. The ME4 has four iSCSI ports on each controller. The iSCSI ports are cabled redundantly to two different switches dedicated to iSCSI traffic. Ports 0 and 2 are on one subnet, while ports 1 and 3 are on the second subnet. The server has two 10 gig NICs dedicated for iSCSI traffic. Prior to starting the deployment, all IPs should be defined on a planning worksheet to avoid any confusion. To help better identify individual ports, I use a standard format for the IP schema. Let's take a look at it. First, I use a Class B subnet and use either 1 or 2 in the second octet to signify what subnet it is in. I also use a 1 or 2 on the first digit of the third octet to identify what controller the port is on. In addition, the last octet matches the controller's management IP. You can see here all ports are on controller A have a 1 and end in 128 matching the management port. For ports on controller B, the third octet starts with 2 and the fourth octet matches the management port IP of 129. Finally, the third digit of the third octet is the port number. If this had been a dual protocol system with both Fiber Channel and iSCSI, there would only be two ports in each subnet, not four. After reviewing your workshop, it's time to cable the server and assign IPs to the NICs. After the cabling is complete, open up vSphere Web Client, click on the Configure tab for the host you need to manage. Click on Physical Adapters, locate the NICs to be used for iSCSI. In this case, it's VM NIC0 and VM NIC1. If you are unsure which NIC is cabled to which switch, you can unplug each NIC one at a time and look at the status of each NIC. It is important to assign the correct IP for each NIC. Click on VM Kernel Adapters, then the plus icon. Click Next. Change the selection to New Standard Switch, then click Next. Click on the plus icon. Then select the NIC that is on the first subnet. In this case, it is VM NIC0. Click OK. Click Next. It is recommended to change the network label to something that will help identify its purpose. Check any of these services that will be using this VM kernel adapter. Change the IPv4 settings to use manual IP and configure it with the IP from your worksheet. Click Next, then Finish. Repeat for the second NIC on the other subnet. Click on Storage Adapters. If iSCSI has never been configured before, click on the plus icon, choose Software iSCSI Adapter, click on OK. Highlight the new iSCSI Software Adapter, then click on the Targets tab, then Dynamic Discovery, click Add. Use your planning worksheet and add the IP of one of the ports on controller A that is on the first subnet, then click on OK. Click on Add again and enter an IP address from the other subnet, choosing a port from controller B. Click on Rescan. Next is running the host setup wizard. Log in to the ME Storage Manager. On the home page, click on Action, then Host Setup. Confirm you have met all the prerequisites, then click Next. Type a name for the host name, 
Typically, you would use the real host name. I'm just going to use ESX-Server1. Select the initiator and click Next. If this is going to be part of a cluster, you can either create a new host group or add to an existing one. This will be a standalone server, so I'm selecting Do Not Group This Host. Click Next to continue. By default, two 100 gig volumes will be created, one in each pool. I recommend renaming the volume to include the server's name. You can edit the size, change the pool ownership, add and remove the number of volumes to create. When you have the volumes how you want them, click Next. Click Configure Host. Click yes or no depending if you have another host ready to be configured. In most cases you will click no. Back in vSphere Web Client, click on Rescan Storage and click OK. After the rescan is complete, click on the Devices tab. You should see the Dell EMC iSCSI disk. Click on Storage Devices, then the Refresh icon. The disk should show up. Scroll down and click on Edit Multipathing. Be sure you highlight the right disk. The default settings is most recently used. It is recommended to change to Round Robin. Click on Data Stores, then the plus icon. Leave it on VMFS and click Next. Provide a meaningful name, select the iSCSI disk and click Next. Select the VMFS version you need and click Next. Make any adjustments and click Finish. That now completes the demo. The volume is now accessible to the server with multipathing configured.